honor to be at a roast hosted by Shaq's dick. <laughs> wow, Ludacris and Snoop Dogg are here. If I was 38, I'd be freaking out right now. <laughs> you might know Ludacris from your mom's That's What I Call Music CD. <laughs> Come on, let's hear it for Shaq. Thanks for being here and taking a break from throwing barrels at Super Mario. Please don't eat me. Shaq has shattered eight backboards and 79 cervixes. <laughs> Snoop's son just got accepted to play Division I college football. Yeah. So Snoop Dogg found out he has a son. Uh, and now speaking of someone who probably doesn't know he has a son, Justin Bieber is here. Justin, you know, I lost my dad on 9-11 and I always regretted growing up without a dad until I met your dad, Justin. <laughs> Now I'm glad mine's dead. <laughs> and now for the greatest transition in the history of comedy, uh, two people from the movie Soul Plane are here. Soul Plane was the worst experience of my life involving a plane. There is a lot of star power up here. These men combined have made millions in child support payments. <laughs> Kevin does all of his own stunts. He climbs into his own chair. He goes up on his wife. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know this. Shaquille is an Arabic name for handsome, and O'Neal is the Irish word for just kidding. <laughs> Shaq's dick is so big, he has to use Dropbox to send a dick pic. <laughs> Snoop's here. Snoop, you look like Shaq's skeleton. All these rappers on stage and Martha Stewart has done the most jail time. Justin Bieber, everybody. Seems like only yesterday you were discovered on YouTube. Time flies when you're a piece of shit. Selena Gomez had to f you. She is literally the least lucky Selena in all of entertainment history. In case you didn't know, I am Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Diesel, and Martha Stewart's baby daddy. And trust me, Martha know how to work that mother f boy, let me tell you. Once you go Shaq, you never go back. Ain't that right, Martha? But I'm not the only baller here tonight. What's up, Snoop? Snoop made a reggae album. If you're a rap fan, you may not have it. But if you're a reggae fan, I know you don't have it. <laughs> Justin, as a father of six, you gotta straighten up, son. You know, last year you were ranked the fifth most hated person of all time. Kim Jong-un didn't even score that low. <laughs> and he uses your music to torture people. <laughs> but thanks to that music, Justin is worth over $200 million and in prison, four packs of cools. <laughs> Justin got a tattoo of Jesus on his calf. Why well, you gotta bring Jesus in your mess? <laughs> that man has suffered enough. I know you're all wondering why I'm here tonight. It's because Martha Stewart changes people's lives for the better. I believe the bedroom is the most important room in the house, but I don't have to tell you that, Ludacris. You have three kids with three different women. May I suggest pulling out some time and finishing on some fine, highly absorbent Martha Stewart bed linens? <laughs> Let's get to the reason I'm here tonight, which is to give Justin Bieber some tips to use when he inevitably ends up in prison. The first thing you'll need is a shank. I made mine out of a pintail comb and a pack of gum. <laughs> I found Bubblicious works best and it's so much fun to say. You see, when I did my stretch, all the hood rats on my cell block wanted to break off a piece of Martha Stewart's ass. So I walked into the chow hall, picked out the biggest bull dyke, and I stuck her. From then on, prison was easier than making blueberry scones. <laughs> Shaq, I hope your mom doesn't still hold a grudge. So, Justin, my final piece of advice is, call me. 
or <laughs> or not, I'm out there. I don't need no warm up. I've been smoking and drinking. I feel real good about myself. Just as life changed when Usher heard one of his songs and liked it, which only goes to prove that Usher ain't black. <laughs> now, Justin, most niggas like myself, we go a little crazy when we get famous. But nigga, you bought a monkey. <laughs> I mean, that monkey was more embarrassed than the one that started the AIDS epidemic. It's amazing to have Kevin Hart and Shaq here. Is this a roast or is this Tyler Perry's of Mice and Men? Uh, <laughs> Shaq's a very unique player in NBA history. He's the first player in NBA history to have his shoe size, IQ, and jersey all be the same number. <laughs> Shaq is a police officer in Florida. If you want to escape from Shaq, just jog slowly away from him. Just... <laughs> and he'll fall eventually. <laughs> Snoop is here, Snoop Dogg, Snoop D-O-double-G. -Double Snoop looks like a cool-ass salamander. Snoop, the only way you'll get another hit is if you stand behind Suge Knight's car in a parking lot. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see Comedy Central diversifying his talent with whatever race Pete Davidson is. Uh, you just look real, you're just real vague, man. You have a weird, vague-ass face, and I don't like it. <laughs> Seem like a nice person, but when I talk to you, I don't have fun. And now the man of the hour, Justin Bieber. They say that you roast the ones you love, but I don't like you at all, man. I'm just here because this is a real good opportunity for me. Uh, <laughs> I hate your music, man. I hate your music more than Bill Cosby hates my comedy. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I don't have a lot of time, all right? I'm currently over at stage 24 hosting Spike TV's Your Mother's a Fat Bitch award show. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this guy is doing it right. Here's a couple things I know. October 18th, 2010, Bieber accused of assaulting a 12-year-old at a laser tag arena. Kaboom! <laughs> March 4th, 2013, two hours late to a concert in Dubai because he refused to stop playing a video game. Say what? If anything, not only do you need to continue to live your life with the same reckless abandon, I suggest you turn up the heat. Look, I'm new to comedy, but here's a joke, all right? What do you get when you give a teenager $200 million? A bunch of has-beens calling you a lesbian for two hours. <laughs> Kevin is so short, he calls Lil Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> I love Kevin Hart's career plan. Do everything Martin Lawrence did, only shittier. <laughs> and Martha, thanks for coming. I know that's probably something you don't do much of anymore. Uh, Luda. Luda and I had a lot of hours making the song Baby together. In fact, he told me it was the only baby he ever made on purpose. Snoop Doggy Dog. What's up, man? He's way too shy to admit this, but he was actually the Billboard's top male artist the year I was born. And look at you now, Snoop. You're one of the 10 dudes at my row, sitting right next to Martha Stewart and that Hannibal guy. How cool is this? <laughs> so cool. You made it. How do you, man? How do you? not know this, but Seth Rogen has a writing and directing partner named Evan Goldberg. What does this other guy look like that you're the face of the operation? <laughs> I assume he's like a sweaty Orthodox Jew eating a pastrami sandwich. Hey, Seth, yeah, I added nine dick jokes on page four. And I was thinking that the guys are friends, and then they're not friends, and then at the end of the movie, they're friends again. <laughs> And also, they should smoke a lot of ganja, Sethi. Lisa Lampanelli's here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Jeff Ross. <laughs> Jonah Hill, you know, a lot of people are gonna touch on your weight tonight, Jonah, but not enough people are gonna talk about what an asshole you've become. <laughs> Quick reminder that if at any point tonight James fully opens his eyes, there will be six more weeks of summer. Sarah Silverman, everyone's like, she's hot for a comic. 
But I don't agree, because she's not just hot for a comic, she's hot for someone her age. That's right. Um, seriously, Sarah, you were my favorite comic as a kid. Um, and then there's, uh, there's Jeff Ross, who's gonna fucking kill me later. Um, I never gave you this compliment before, but you're actually the reason I decided to become successful. I saw what you became and it scared the living shit out of me. But seriously guys, can you please pick up after yourselves? It's gonna make Jeff's life a lot easier. Aziz, uh, Natasha, Nick Kroll, um, I'm assuming you guys are James's friends from high school, but I think that is so dope that you guys are willing to get up here even though no one knows who the fuck you guys are. <laughs> Can't tell if this is a dais or the line to suck Judd Apatow's balls. <laughs> right before the show started, Seth rolled a gigantic fatty because that was the only way we could get Jonah Hill onto the stage. <laughs> Jonah actually gained 50 pounds for his role in the new Martin Scorsese film because the producers wanted the character to be a Jonah Hill type. We are very excited, and I'm just going to say it, honored to introduce our next roaster. He's responsible not just for my career, but for every single person's career in this entire room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Hollywood. Before I start, I just want to say to everyone up here, you're welcome. In no other place but Hollywood could these 10 people make the kind of money they make and sleep with the kind of people they sleep with. <laughs> Seth Rogen, I put you on a movie poster and I said, deal with it. <laughs> and then I put Barbra Streisand on that poster and the world said, no. <laughs> Listen, if I wanted to watch two ugly Jews weaving through traffic, I'd watch Seinfeld's web series. <laughs> and Jonah, I'm assuming you're here because Seth is? People call me all the time and they say, Hollywood, do we really need two of these guys? <laughs> Jeff Ross, hi, I'm Hollywood. We haven't met before. <laughs> uh, sorry we haven't been able to do anything yet. Like Enterprise Rental Car on Christmas Day, I do not have a vehicle for you. And now I come to you, James Franco. But I know it hasn't always been easy for you, James. You overcame a crippling childhood affliction known as dumb face. <laughs> but you never let that interfere with your dream of making dog shit movies. I just don't know what you're doing. I gave you a chance to be a movie star, make money, hang out with the spider guy. And you said, nah, I wanna be an artist. Well, I'll tell you what I told Richard Grieco 20 years ago. <laughs> Play ball, you squinty fuck. Jonah Hill, I loved you as a baseball analyst in Moneyball, and I love you as Rosie O'Donnell in real life. Jonah was born and raised in Hollywood, and you can tell he's a name dropper with big tits and an eating disorder. Andy's comedy group is called The Lonely Island, which is how each of his teeth feel. Nick Kroll, your fan must be so excited you're here. No, Nick, I love Kroll's show. You are amazing at characters. You're like a chameleon in that you have hideous skin and bulging eyes. Sarah Silverman's had more ugly men inside her than Comic-Con. Kim Kardashian is here. Oh, that's a Z, sorry. I get him confused. They're both brown narcissists riding Kanye's dick. <laughs> James Franco. Acting, teaching, directing, writing, producing, photography, soundtracks, editing. Is there anything you can do? Now, at first, I wasn't sure why James would do this roast, and then I saw Spring Breakers, and I was like, oh, he'll do anything. <laughs> James has a new reality show coming out on the Ovation Network, wow. Finally, something so awful that even TLC was like, nah, we're good. Wow, look at this dais, a word I knew before tonight. Someone must have told the producer that this was a panel of Kenny Rogers roasters, because you guys are a bunch of chickens. Thank you. It's a chicken-based restaurant, I researched that. The lovely Sarah Silverman is here. I hate to break it to you, Sarah, but you're getting older. And you know who else is getting older? My mom. I'm scared she's gonna die soon. What's that gonna be like? Roasted Sarah. <laughs> okay, who's my next victim? Uh, <laughs> Natasha Leggero is here. She's, uh, she's basically a complete unknown, but tonight we're getting paid the same amount of money. <laughs> Here's one. Nick Kroll, Bill Hader, and Seth Rogen walk into a bar. They're there to pick me up because I'm an alcoholic who can't manage my feelings. Nailed you, fucker, suck a butt. Uh, is there a barista here? Because this roast just got dark. My good friend Aziz Ansari is here. 
Aziz's parents are from India and he's from South Carolina. Hey Aziz, what's it like to have a unique perspective on what it means to be American, you bag of shit? <laughs> Jonah is so dumb that when he had me over for a dinner party, I overstayed my welcome and he pretended to be tired so I would leave without getting my feelings hurt. You a passive aggressive sweetheart, Jonah! <laughs> Expect letters, Comedy Central. If you don't want controversy, you shouldn't have invited the king. <laughs> Here's a fun fact, James Franco has a tiny dick. James's dick is so small that I had to suck it for like three hours just to get him hard. And then it got way bigger, like scary big. I was like, you want me to do what with that? <laughs> hey guys, can you try and settle down out there? I'm trying to roast up here. I don't go down to your job and knock James Franco's dick out of my mouth. You never take me anywhere, James! So these are classic roast jokes. <laughs> Jeff Ross knows what I'm talking about. You melting hippo. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you guys, this has been great. Let's always remember this. I do think one day Jonah will win an Oscar. Meyer, hot dog eater of the Millennium Award. <laughs> Also, I think it's so cool that some of you guys were able to travel back in time to 1995 for those Indian jokes you did. That's so cool. So many gay jokes tonight. Wow, so many gay jokes about Franco. Apparently, if you're clean, well-dressed, and mildly cultured, you're super gay now. Is that why the rest of you guys are so aggressively fat and dirty? You think if you read one book and take a shower, dicks are just gonna fly into your face? <laughs> Franco, I don't know you that well, but I'm glad you had me here. And later tonight, I'm looking forward to you coming up here and doing what you do best. Being mildly funny, reading material Seth Rogen has written for you. Thank you guys very much. And you're gonna say I'm a pretty boy, and you don't know how painful that is. <laughs> I'm always typecast as the same guy. You know, the handsome wizard and handsome meth dealer and the handsome, clumsy amputee hiker. <laughs> Just once, I'd like to play some of the diverse roles that Nick Kroll gets, like <laughs> the rat-faced attorney. <laughs> okay, all right, so you guys think I'm pretentious. Well, James Franco addressed James Franco being pretentious in his book, James Franco. <laughs> but it's not just me. Look at how full of himself Jonah's become since his Oscar nomination. Don't forget where you came from, pal. Sure, you're buddies with Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum, but I was your first handsome friend. Before you get too cocky, remember I was there, and this is the end, when you're getting brutally ass ran by that demon. We both know the only way the demon could keep his erection was because he was thinking about me. So all night I've had to sit here and listen to everyone's jokes and pretending to be amused by them, but in reality, the joke's on all of you. This is not a roast. This is my greatest, most elaborate art installation ever. I'm not the real guest of honor. These aren't real comedians, and we're not even on a real network. <laughs> what you've seen tonight was my brilliant opus to sequester an artistic visionary and subject him to the mindless, incoherent trashings of a scattering of miscreated, talentless abnormalities. <laughs> I call it genius unscathed, and this is my masterpiece. There's only one thing missing, my signature. That says James Franco, bitches. Thank you, good night. For years, Rob Lowe had a sex addiction, but he cured it by getting less famous. <laughs> it's not easy being Rob. He said being so handsome made it difficult for him to find meaningful roles. I wanted to ask Brad Pitt about that, but he was too busy acting in meaningful roles. <laughs> Rob was great on The West Wing, you remember that show? I assume your pal Charlie Sheen helped you with that. He's used to working with AIDS. White House AIDS. What did you get? Oh. 
You guys, Peyton Manning is here physically. No, come on, we love Peyton Manning. We're lucky to have him tonight. I'll never forget Peyton's career. Sadly, he will. <laughs> Pete Davidson, Pete's dad, never got to see him on SNL because he passed away on 9-11. Pete's mom has never seen him on SNL because she blinks. <laughs> is Pete white? Is he black? Ann Coulter needs to know if she can decide if she hates him. <laughs> Pete, I actually thought you were black, but I guess you just have your uh, dad's ashy skin. And Ann Coulter is here, everybody. Ann Coulter, if you're here, who's scaring the crows away from our crops? <laughs> you know, Ann describes herself as a polemicist, but most people call her a c You know, last year we had Martha Stewart, who sells sheets, and now we have Ann Coulter, who cuts eye holes in them. Uh, anyway, Jewel's here. Jewel, uh, I won't make fun of you yet, because uh, I want to give everyone at home time to Google who you are. Um, my mom really wanted me to get you to sign this. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what the f*** it is. If it's a phone, it's broken. But uh, she'd really appreciate it if you could sign this. My mom came here to see you, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for Rob Lowe, okay? Right? <laughs> Rob Lowe. Or as gonorrhea doctors call him, patient zero. <laughs> People call Rob Lowe a bad actor, but that's only because they never saw him tell his wife he didn't f*** that nanny. <laughs> Jewel is here, or as I call her, Trailer Swift. Jewel, I do not want to bad mouth you since God already did. <laughs> no. I think your smile is cute. I feel like your teeth are like the Spice Girls. You know, they're all different colors and they're like doing their own thing. So that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and without furor ado, Ann Coulter. <laughs> Oh, Anne, what's it like to be like a real life supervillain? You know, like, I'd ask you how you sleep at night, but I'd assume just upside down in a robe of 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Anne Coulter has written 11 books, 12 if you count Mein Kampf. <laughs> yes. Anne's been called things like a racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, a white supremacist, and that's just while getting plowed by Bill Maher. <laughs> the only person you will ever make happy is the Mexican who digs your grave. I do want to say, first of all, as a feminist, uh, I can't support everything that's being said up here tonight. But uh, as somebody that hates Ann Coulter, I'm delighted, so. <laughs> David Spade, amazingly, um, has slept with some of the most beautiful actresses in Hollywood, proving just how ugly show business makes women feel. <laughs> and Ralph Macchio is here. Who doesn't love Ralph Macchio? Bill collectors. <laughs> and actual karate masters and... I don't know, real actors and Italians. You know, people. <laughs> and Peyton Manning is here because Eli is still out there making his dad proud. Uh, <laughs> Pete Davidson's ugly. He's actually going on his third year of SNL. It's been a while since I've been there, of course, but uh, you gotta help me out now. Is it the fourth year that they finally let you see an orthodontist? <laughs> Jacked up teeth! <laughs> Fix that shit! <laughs> Jimmy Carr's got better teeth and he's British! <laughs> Fun fact. 
Ann Coulter has a big, angry bush. No joke, that's just a fun fact. <laughs> Rob's played many wonderful characters in film. Recently, he played JFK in the movie Killing Kennedy. Jesus Christ, hasn't that family suffered enough? <laughs> grassy, no! But not as grassy as Ann Coulter's big, angry bush. Instant callback! And who can forget Parks and Rec, where Rob played a guy who misused the word literally. Correct use of the word would be something like, I don't know, um, Rob Lowe has literally had sex with everyone in this room. <laughs> Except Ann Coulter, because her bush is literally too angry. Yes, three-peat, it's a three-peat. They said I couldn't do it, but I did it. I nailed Ann Coulter's bush three times. David Spade, our host this evening, doing a fabulous job. <laughs> David is perhaps best known for his work with comedy legend Chris Farley. <laughs> Tragically, Chris Farley died when his heart stopped due to a lethal combination of heroin, cocaine, and the stress of carrying David Spade through two movies. <laughs> Nikki Glaser is here, one of my favorites. On Nikki's Comedy Central show, Not Safe, she found out her father is hung like a horse. And we found out Nikki inherited her face from her dad's dick. <laughs> Pete Davidson's here. I'm appalled that people would come here and make jokes about the sacrifice Pete's heroic father made on 9-11. This is not the roast of Pete Davidson's father. That was in 2001. Oh, that was dope. Wow. Wow. And Coulter. Here we go. <laughs> Ann Coulter is one of the most repugnant, hateful, hatchet-faced bitches alive. <laughs> but... But it's not too late to change, Ann. You could kill yourself. It's 56 days to Halloween, but I see that Ann Coulter is already in her skeleton costume. <laughs> People ask, why is Ann Coulter here tonight? Answer, because the Right to Lifers wanted everyone to see what an abortion looks like up close. And you know, Ann, after seeing your set tonight, I think we've all witnessed the first bombing that you can't blame on a Muslim. <laughs> Jimmy Carr. Born to Irish Catholic parents, raised Catholic, Jimmy first knew he was funny at age nine when he made his priest laugh so hard that cum shut out of his nose. As I sat here tonight being constantly reminded of my shortcomings, surrounded by this cast of mutants, I'm sorry, Anne, racist mutants. <laughs> it hit me. I didn't hit rock bottom 26 years ago. I hit rock bottom an hour and a half ago. How the f did I end up here? As we all know, I followed in my father's footsteps, but David, you forged a path on your own. I know you wanted to follow in your dad's footsteps, but he uh, snuck out of the house so carefully he didn't leave any tracks. <laughs> Baby, hey, Daddy, bring it. He's bringing it. I just realized that I am not the only athlete up here tonight. As you all know, earlier this year, Ann Coulter won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Congrats on that, Ann. Great job. But I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I have no idea who the rest of you guys up here are. I mean, I've been sitting up here tonight with all these folks that no one's ever heard of, thinking to myself, did I just get traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars?
nothing said here tonight will be meaner than what you left on your daughter's voicemail. <laughs> of course, uh, Alec's true passion has always been the theater. Alec loves to hit the stage because it can't press charges. <laughs> Alec used to be a belligerent drunk before he became a belligerent sober person. It's true, Alec had a substance abuse problem in the past, but he worked through it and hasn't done anything of substance in 20 years. Now, Alec, sit back, unclench your fists, and I promise this will be the funniest thing you've ever been a part of that Tina Fey didn't carry you through. Robert De Niro is here. Looking like Alf. Uh, I can't even believe I, I get to share this stage with you tonight, Robert De Niro. And, and by this stage, I mean the final one of your life. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't feel right about any of this. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner, I just want to thank you for all you've done for the trans movement in the size 16 stiletto industry. <laughs> you are such an incredible athlete. People forget just how fast you once ran from your first family to go be on a reality show. <laughs> Seriously though, I know being a new mom is hard. But even Casey Anthony knows the current location of her daughter. Caitlin, I know you've only publicly identified as a woman for a few years, but I just want you to know that I know that deep down you have always been a c And uh, <laughs> I spell it with a K though for you. I'm such a fan of the Baldwins. I've never been so sure that four people have buried a hooker together. <laughs> In all seriousness, I want to thank Alec. Um, in his memoir, he bravely admitted that he had once considered suicide. And I just want to say that I, that meant a lot to me because I have also considered your suicide. And I have some ideas. <laughs> I even know what I'm going to wear. Larry Bird is here. I mean, Nikki Glaser is here. <laughs> You know, the only difference between Larry Bird and Nikki Glaser is Larry could actually pass his 33. <laughs> dating. Uh, Caroline Ray from Sabrina is here. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> but Caroline, if you're here, that means uh, Salem the Cat must have turned this down, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. De Niro, we know how much you love that black pussy. Jenner is here. Yeah. Caitlin completed her gender reassignment in 2017, finally confirming that no one in that family wants a white dick. <laughs> Alec, where are your brothers tonight? God knows they're not working. Um, <laughs> let's face it, no one wants to be here. The person who went to the greatest lengths to not show up tonight was Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner, proof that older women in Hollywood get fewer parts. <laughs> Dr. Ken Jong is here. Yes. Did you become a doctor so you could find your own penis because God knows no one else was looking for it? No. Oh. Speaking of shrimp, I saw your special on Netflix and um, <laughs> did not know they filmed open mics. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Glaser.
Glazer, it has been driving me crazy all night. Which 1970s male Olympian did you used to be? <laughs> Nikki, you were an inspiration on Dancing with the Stars. I had no idea you were deaf. <laughs> <laughs> on your TV show, you asked your parents if they had ever done anal. And of course they said, after Nikki was born, we only did anal. <laughs> Blake, you look like nine different races all working together to make sure you never win a championship. <laughs> Hey, Kayla. You goddamn hypocrite. You're like against gay marriage, you voted for Trump. You're like the Auntie Tom of the trans community. I mean, okay. I mean, you did open the door for trans people, but then you ran in and slammed that shit shut behind your flat ass. <laughs> Robin De Niro, baby. It's an honor to be up here with you, man. Robert, man, you've given us so many amazing performances, Goodfellas, Awakenings, but tonight, man, it's gonna be the best one yet. It's gonna be the old Italian man trying to figure out trans pronouns in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> and John, is it true your wife is named Tran Ho? Yes. Oh, I wanna meet her. I mean, I'm waiting, I can't wait. I will also wanna say hello to Kendall's ex, you don't even have to say his name. It's just Kendall's ex. Anyway, Blake Griffin. Blake. <laughs> Los Angeles to Detroit. Let me tell you, I can tell you a thing or two about switching teams. <laughs> yeah, you're a nice boy. It didn't work out between the two of you. You're always kind of welcome to come over to my home and know that you're the second best athlete in the house. There's a lot of hate in the world, but we can still laugh at ourselves. And honestly, that's why I'm here tonight. I've seen it all. I've even gotten threats. And I want other members of the trans community to know that if I'm strong enough to sit up here and be ridiculed all night, that you can handle anything. except listening to Adam Carolla's podcast. Oh my God, that's torture. Adam Carolla is so boring, I've never seen a drier pussy in my life. And that's coming from me. It is so great to be here. I'm, on, uh, I'm a judge on The Masked Singer, so it's nice to be on another show where you have to guess who the celebrities are, so. Um, I look at Blake and I think, hmm, orange is the new black. Yeah. Alex's wife is so young, he introduces them as 23 and me. Now. Alex's daughter, Ireland, is here. She might as well be named Zimbabwe, given the distance between them, am I right? <laughs> but we're really here to celebrate the real star of 30 Rock and SNL. But let's be honest, Tina Fey said no. <laughs> Alec, no offense, but you weren't the star of 30 Rock. And, and with De Niro here, you're not even the star of your own <laughs> roast. You know, it's like, it's like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like with, with, with Justin Bieber as your nephew, you're not even starving your own family. It's just like, <laughs> it's sad. I'm just like, sad, or whatever you do. Hi, Dad. I'm Ireland. <laughs> it's good to be here. I almost didn't even know about it because I haven't checked my voicemails for my dad from the last like 12 years or something. <laughs> I actually have a lot in common with the people on this roast because like them, I don't really know you that well either. <laughs> a lot of people only know my dad as an angry guy, but he's more than some lunatic who loses his temper. He also loses Emmys and Oscars <laughs> and... 
custody of his firstborn child. Am I right? Shit. It hasn't been easy being the daughter of an iconic movie star. But I'm not here to talk about my mother. <laughs> or her Oscar. A lot of people don't know this, uh, but when I was a kid, Caitlyn Jenner was my middle school track coach. You taught me to jump over the greatest hurdle of all, which is my father's approval. <laughs> Do you know what it's like having a gold medal athlete as your track coach? Blake, you get it, right? You've disappointed a Jenner that's completely out of your league. Did he really date your daughter? Yeah. He did? You should have married her, and now you're never gonna get a ring. What the f am I doing here? <laughs> Who the f are you? <laughs> and Coulter, everybody. <laughs> Nikki is what's known as a dirty comedian. And I don't mean her material. I mean, she hasn't washed a pussy since Memorial Day. <laughs> and now, for the only true movie star on the stage, me. <laughs> Critics say I have a unique quality as an actor. I actually like Alec Baldwin. And I'm happy to be here for Alec, but honestly, I'm here to teach Chris Redd, Caitlyn Jenner, and Blake Griffin how to <laughs> black women. <laughs> Here's an historical fact. Alec's ancestors came over on the Mayflower. Alex's great, 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 great grandfather was the first white man to punch a Native American in the face. <laughs> That's a fact. Now Alec is doing it to paparazzi. And he doesn't care who he hits. I once saw him take a selfie and punch his own face. <laughs> You've starred in huge blockbuster movies, Alec, and now you're hosting a f***ing <laughs> game show? Yeah. I'd say you're about a year and a half away from doing commercials for reverse mortgages. <laughs> Alec, I want to thank you for inviting me to do this. Now Rocky and Bullwinkle won't be the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. <laughs> Sean, you have the face of a ventriloquist doll and the asshole of a much larger ventriloquist doll. <laughs> Blake Griffin, my gift to you is bringing awareness to whatever tragic skin disease it is you have. <laughs> You're a remarkable man, Blake. I wish we were as close as your eyes are. <laughs> what devastating comment could I make about Nikki Glaser that she hasn't already muttered to herself in a mirror at Equinox? Caroline Ray, Caroline, I just love you. You are so open and honest. Backstage, she told all of us she hasn't been laid in so long. She went through Caitlyn Jenner's trash looking for Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner is an American gold medalist who changed genders and somehow still managed to be the least interesting member of her family. <laughs> her strength and beauty are as hypnotic as a Salvador Dali painting of Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> you look like a real doll that's been f***ed a little too close to the fireplace. <laughs> Bruce Willis is what you get if you isolate the white part of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Ha, ha, ha. 
and, it, and it's not just action movies that made Bruce a star. He's actually a great dramatic actor, too. Like, I love The Sixth Sense. It's a great movie. And the ending, I did not see that twist coming. I mean, I, I shouldn't spoil it, but I mean, it's been like 20 years. It's so good. Okay, so at the end of The Sixth Sense, Bruce goes back to making shitty movies. <laughs> we want you to have a good time tonight, but don't get too comfortable up here because later we're gonna be replacing you with Ashton Kutcher. Relax, relax. Bruce gets along with him fine. He was even at Ashton and Demi's wedding. His gift was a toaster and $90 million. Joseph Gordon, love it, everyone! He's so cute, so adorable. I bet you eat pussy, but only with the crust cut off first. Isn't that his look? Speaking of crusty pussy, I'll get to you in a second, Sybil. I, um... I know. I know. Martha Stewart, thank you for being here. Seriously, and congratulations on getting that Thai soccer team out of your vagina. And into your sweatshops. That's where they are now. Surprisingly, Martha said that prison food wasn't that bad, just, you know, as long as it was clean shaven, so. <laughs> she loves attention to detail. Is she laughing? I'm terrified of her. <laughs> Kevin Pollack is here. Such an amazing actor. Most, uh, I know Kevin as like one of the greatest impressionists of all time. I'm a huge fan. My favorite of his is um, he does an amazing Robin Williams. I, I just wish he would finish it. <laughs> yeah, okay guys, listen. All I'm saying is that we've lost a lot of greats to suicide recently and it's time we lose some okays. <laughs> Bruce. Yes. This is a, honestly a real uh, a big personal moment for me to be here roasting my dead cousin's second favorite action star. <laughs> I know you obviously as the star of every DVD you kind of just find on the street. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that Bruce is a very talented musician because he isn't. Bruce has also been very active with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is where they make sick kids meet you, so dying doesn't seem so terrible. Nikki said on her own show that she enjoys anal sex. Her words. Hey, good for you. I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, you don't eat, so you might as well use that hole for something, huh? <laughs> I first met Bruce when I was working with his first wife, Demi Moore, in the film A Few Good Men. Yeah. I think it's time everyone knew something about Demi. When she shaved her head, she said it was for her role in the film G.I. Jane. But the truth is, she shaved her head because she loved her husband, Bruce. And he wanted to f his own face. And now, Bruce, one of your friends and co-stars in Pulp Fiction couldn't be here tonight, so they've asked me to pass along a message from Christopher Walken. They put it up here for me. Here it is. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't attend your funeral. <laughs> I did want to say I've always been a fan Particularly, your work in the film 12 Monkeys. <laughs> sure. I was disappointed that you did not portray a monkey. <laughs> but you gave a beautifully nuanced performance, reminiscent of a monkey who poops in his hands <laughs> and then throws it in your face. <laughs> Mostly, though, I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for creating my favorite restaurant, Planet Hollywood. <laughs> if I'm honest, it's also my favorite planet. 
Bruce Willis, I'm so happy to see you. Gosh, the last time I saw your face, I was shopping for movies at the gas station. <laughs> Bruce went on to make 96 movies using just one facial expression. <laughs> I'm thrilled that I got to meet Martha Stewart tonight. I had the honor of playing Martha in two separate movies. I did my best, but the only one to truly capture Martha Stewart was the FBI. <laughs> I ran into Nikki Glaser in the ladies' room. I saw her from behind with her slender body and blonde hair, and I thought, she must be a model. Then she turned around, and I thought, nope, she's a comic. <laughs> oh, shit, what am I doing here? I don't know any of these old-ass white people up here. I'm like I'm with the cast of Young and the Restless. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, you've done movies with other black comedians. Why they ask somebody who ain't never did shit with you? I don't get that. <laughs> you with Chris Tucker, Tracy Morgan? God damn, this is sad. <laughs> I mean, you had a limo driver in Die Hard Argyle, and he not even here, and he... <laughs> I don't know what the f he doing. He need this shit. <laughs> You don't got Argyle out here. What the f uh, It's funny to see, like, Jeff Ross and Bruce Willis up here. Y'all two bald, white motherfuckers are crazy as <laughs> Like, both of y'all look like y'all had two different stages of cancer. <laughs> I was sitting in a bar with Bruce, and I asked him if he liked the script I'd sent him, and he says, try keeping a marriage together when 22 is still on the menu. What does that mean? I mean, I know what it means, but why say it to that? I... But I fell off my bar stool laughing. I had no idea why. I still don't know what he thought of the script, and we're done making the movie. I don't think he's read it. Can I act that weird and have people love me? I cannot. Can I, can I say things like, the Me Too movement is ruining natural sexual dynamics while I'm wearing a Make America Great Again hat and then go blow up a helicopter of Mexican extras dressed up as Middle Eastern terrorists, call that a twofer, and still have a bunch of liberal Hollywood executives call my agent the next morning and say they want to be in the Edward Norton business? <laughs> I most definitely cannot. I wish I was Teflon like you, but then again, I do like my kids not being embarrassed by me. Um, <laughs> the script of his last three films was crinkle your forehead, say short, memorable quip, no more than four words, shoot the gun, duck, repeat the end. It's a half a page long. <laughs> you could learn your lines in the car on the way to the set. You don't, but you could. <laughs> Dennis Rodman, where do I begin? If you had told me back in the 90s that Dennis Rodman would be negotiating a nuclear arms agreement in 2018, I would have said, Dennis Rodman is alive in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Local comedian Dom Herrera is here. Dom, I know your career never really took off, but if you just keep doing what you've been doing, I'm sure you'll eventually be discovered by your landlord two weeks after your heart attack. <laughs> and Edward Norton, I am a huge fan. You are amazing. <laughs> Edward takes the craft of acting very seriously. He prepared to play the Incredible Hulk by spending 30 years losing his temper and turning into a giant asshole. <laughs> Oh, and now the lovely Sybil Shepherd is here. I remember years ago when I heard there was going to be a movie, a TV movie about me, I thought, oh God, no, because they're always so dreadful. I was really nervous. Well, you can imagine my relief when I found out Sybil Shepherd was going to play me. I thought, Sybil Shepherd, great. No one will see it. <laughs> Now, Sybil, 
isn't it interesting that your career basically ended after that role? As if you defended someone, someone with power, <laughs> someone with vast resources and money. Who could cook up such a plan? Who could craft such a scheme? It was me, bitch. Edward Norton, Ed, Ed, you did a movie called Primal Fear. It was named after the feeling he got every time he banged Courtney Love without a condom. <laughs> it's a true story, ladies and gentlemen. Is this thing on? Is this on? <laughs> Actually, he, did, he dated Courtney Love, but he never became famous enough for her to have him murdered. <laughs> Bruce, I see you now, and I see you, and I see your beautiful daughters, and, I, and I'm so proud of you. You never hear a father brag about his daughter's sexual prowess. You know, they always brag about, my son's a buck, he's a stud. Freshman year in college, he nailed everybody. Boys, girls, dogs, he didn't give a f <laughs> You never hear a father brag about his daughter. Hear that up there? Listen to that. That's my daughter, taking on 10 guys. <laughs> yeah, that's my baby. That's our youngest. She always loved cock. <laughs> the bigger, the better. She always had men lined up around the block. Guys tag teaming her from behind, high fiving over her jizz filled back, dropping loads in her ears, she couldn't hear them. What can I tell you, huh? She's just like a mother, that kid. <laughs> and look at that guy over there, little rail. Looking like David Ortiz bobblehead. <laughs> Silver, I see you over there, baby. I see you. Silver Shepherd, it sounds like a disease that you get when you're fing a sheep. <laughs> Bruce, you keep making these fing bombs. But guess what? So does Kim Jong un. But at least Kim is smart enough not to release his. <laughs> I was married to Bruce Willis for the first three Die Hard movies, <laughs> which makes sense because the last two sucked. I mean, it's funny the things we do for a part. Like, I know that I have dyed and cut and styled my hair, and I can't tell you how, a million ways, but not Bruce. I mean, that's his real hair. <laughs> and ladies, let me tell you, the carpets match the drapes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying he's bald down there. I'm just saying whichever place you look, it looks like a dick. You know, when I look back over all the years that we've had together, we've certainly had our ups and downs, but I have to say those were some of the best times of my life. I just look at our marriage like the sixth sense. You were dead the whole time. In my action movies, there's always some young punk trying to come at me, and tonight it's Judas Gordon Levitt. <laughs> Joe, I took you under my wing. Tried to make you tough. Tried to make you an action star, which ain't easy to do with a kid who looks like the bad boy of figure skating. <laughs> and now I want to take on the toughest person up here, my friend, ex-con Martha Stewart. <laughs> Yeah, baby. If anyone can survive in prison, it's someone who can toss a salad. <laughs> That's right. Martha's a real corporate kingpin. She even has her own brand of wine. It's like her boyfriend. It comes in an old box. <laughs> you know, Sybil Shepherd, my oldest friend, there's people I've known longer, but you are my oldest friend. <laughs> when I got cast in Moonlighting, they picked me over 3,000 other actors because they wanted someone who didn't have a sexual history with Sybil. <laughs> it's so great to be back on TV with you, honey, in another show starring me. <laughs> Kevin Pollack, welcome to the party, pal. You owe your whole career to the guys you impersonate. You've made more money doing Schwarzenegger than his maid. <laughs> and not to mention, 
You're better at cleaning houses. 